Hi, welcome to my new series on this game. My previous series was aimed at people starting out, climbing up to around 1 billion SOV. 1 billion is a pretty good rough measurement for how much power you get from finishing three orange or red advisors. So at 1 billion, you should have about one finished toward battle squad. At 2 billion, you have about two finished toward battle squads. At 3 billion, you have about three finished toward battle squads. So right now, I don't think it's very practical to use three squads in horde battle. It's kind of difficult to do so. You can probably use up to two fairly easily just by lining up their attacks and having them garrison together. And obviously four advisors can be used in arena, up to five can be used in things like lowland and can quest. So there's a lot of use to have up to maybe six built advisors. But the reason why I'm going to do this video series up to three billion, which would be three horde battle squads, is because there's a new mode being added. Um, you don't can't see a lot of info about it right now, but it's going to be called uh, Legion. Apparently it's going to use piles of gold as material, and I have a feeling that you might be able to use up to nine advisors more usefully in Legion. The reason why I think that is because it, it's a good idea for the game developers to give people more reason to build a larger number of advisors. That way it'll keep their big spenders playing longer. So I do think it's going to be a good idea to have nine built advisors, and that's why that's my long-term goal. I have another theory that I'm going to share, which is just a theory, but a lot of my theories have turned out to be true over the past. Uh, you see how there's resource for Legion is going to be gold, a pile of gold. Well, in a lot of games, when you get enough silver, it eventually adds up to being a higher tier resource called gold. And the developers have long been promising they're going to find a use for silver since everyone has trillions of silver sitting around and advisors that earn silver are basically worthless right now. So I have a feeling that Legion is going to be like a different version of Horde Battle that uses more advisors and silver is going to be turned into a gold resource which can then be used in Legion. That's my theory. I don't have any official source telling me that. It's just something I thought of on my own that I think is fairly likely to happen. Okay, with that being said, I'm going to move this video along and give you guys kind of an overview of where my advisors are at, where I'm thinking they're going to be over the next two years. Uh, the reason why I say two years is it took me about one year to get to a billion solve, and I'm expecting it'll be another two years to hit three billion. I've only planned out roughly the next year worth. Too much could change by the time we get to the third year, so I'm kind of leaving that blank right now. So I've only selected my top six advisors so far. I'll figure out the remaining three later. Top advisor will be Ken. The hardest part about building a red advisor is getting their presence to a very high level. The second hardest part is increasing the stars. Uh, Ken's presence isn't that difficult to get at a slow pace, but it's impossible to get it quickly because the only way of getting it is from a low lane battle once per day. And I managed to get about 21 red flags per week, so at that rate I'll be able to get Ken to 5 stars about 6, six or 7 months from now. That'll be an important milestone for winning a saw brush. My second strongest is going to be Hutlin. She'll be stronger than my other red advisors, except for maybe Ken, because I'm going to be giving all my queen presents to her continually, and the presence level is probably the biggest factor in determining how strong an advisor gets in the long run. My third strongest is going to be an advisor I don't currently have yet, Marco Polo. A big part of this guide is going to be discussing what I'm going to do to earn him. I haven't even started building him yet, obviously, since I don't have him yet. But for the next year, working towards him and making him strong will be one of my main goals. So I'll go over that more later in the video. Now for the advisors that will be in my second Horde Battle Squad. First up is Timo. For most of this upcoming year, Timo is still going to be stronger than Marco for me. The only way Marco can grow stronger than her is by winning a lot of cross-server rushes, which take a lot of time. That said, I don't expect a 5-star Timo until anytime soon. Ken will take about seven months to be five star and then tomorrow will take another seven months after that so that'd be more than a year from now to get to to five star in the long run i think she's going to get super strong but it's not going to happen quickly she won't be in my top three even in the long run so i'd say tomorrow is a very respectable red advisor good at many things but not the best at anything marco is probably the best at horde battle and ken's the best in arena uh, next up is going to be kuba Kuba is a great advisor to build in the early game. It's very easy to obtain him and star him up compared to other orange advisors. Invested a lot in him in the early game, especially getting his presence up. And the momentum has just kind of kept me going. He's ended up being one of my strongest due to the high level of presence. But I don't think he's going to be in my main squad in the long run. He'll probably be in the second squad. Last up is going to be Sub, who I haven't even really been building a lot yet. Where is he? Where are you, Sub? There he is. Yeah, he's still at level 300 for me. Originally, I was thinking of building one of the War Maidens for my 6th advisor. 
But now there's, they're adding a consort for the Wolves of War into the game. So the Wolves are going to have everything that War Maidens have, a group bonus. Yeah, here's the group bonus, and there's the presence. And now they're going to have a consort bonus as well. So they'll have everything the War Maidens have, except they're going to be way cheaper to build. And for the time being, I think the Wolves are going to be the most efficient advisor in the game. I think um, yeah, that probably won't last forever. Eventually, uh, they're probably going to add a consort for the Queens as well, and maybe for some Red Advisors, they'll add them as well. So I'm just speculating, but I think for the short run, Wolves are going to be really super efficient, and then eventually the other Advisors will start getting consorts as well, and then Wolves won't be that great anymore. Oh, Marco Polo can only be unlocked from the cross-server first place in Charm, Intimacy, and Sov Rushes. The Charm and Intimacy ones, they can vary a lot in how much it takes to win them. So I'll probably take an opportunistic approach in those. I'll wait for a rush that has very few big spenders in it and just try to win those. If I can, I want to minimize the amount of charm and intimacy I have to actually spend. So I haven't planned out exactly when I will win those charm and intimacy rushes. I just know that I don't want to unlock Marco until Ken is almost at 5 star. Ken's 5th star is going to take, as I covered before, about 7 months for me. So I'll aim to win my very first Marco Polo rush in about six or seven months from now. As far as the Sov rushes go, I think the minimum the minimum for winning a Sov rush in cross server is about 200 million, while the high end would be more like 300 million. So I plan to win about three cross server rushes in the next year, since I'll be gaining about one billion Sov per year. Um, one billion divided by three, I can win about three rushes, getting 300 million Sov. So the first one will have to be at least seven months from now. That means I'd win another two in the remaining five months following that. So the plan would be around May, I'll get Ken to five stars. And along with getting Ken to five stars, I'll raise to Mo to 400 to amplify all the talent I put into her at that point. And I'll max out Kuba's talent because he still has enough presence that he's getting me a good amount of solve for each bit of talent I put into him. So those three things put together in May, I'll release a video when I do that and hopefully win that Sov Rush and unlock Marco Polo then. The next video that I'll be making will come in around August or September next year. That would be getting subbed to 400. Um, Marco Polo I'd have at that point, so he'll be going to 350. And I'll probably get to mode about on 4 star at that point. So those three things will combine together to hopefully get me another 300 million Sov and win that rush too. Um, and after that we'll see. From my previous videos you've hopefully learned that key aspects of growing efficiently in this game are getting the most out of mini games and managing your milestones properly. So it's important how you manage especially the talent pack milestone when you're saving up. So the 180 and the 100 milestone are really good ones because they give a good amount of mini games to them and rewards without having to use that many talent. I used 180 for Canopoly because Canopoly is a pretty good game, but for most games that have the talent milestone, I would just go to 100 and stop. Uh, the exception being Sweet Celebration because that's like the best game in the universe. I would probably go to 300 for that one to get the extra extra bit. Sweet Celebration also lines up with Talent Rush, so using extra talent in that one is a good idea. When Talent Rush is going, I'm actually not as careful. I tend to spend more talent. Part of the reason for that is because during Talent Rush, you can unequip your pets. When I unequip my pets, it causes my Sov to drop by about 10 million, 10 million offsetting the, the Sov that I gained from the Talent. In a previous video, I said you should unequip pets before reset, right before Sov Rush, but that's actually inaccurate. You have to do it during Talent Rush because the game actually tracks what your all-time high Sov is, and it calculates your Sov gains relative to your old all-time high. So in order to get the talent switched over, you actually have to, sorry, in order to get the sob switched over, you have to unequip them during talent rush, use your talent to gain the sob so that you surpass the old all-time high, and then when you can re-equip your pets during sob rush, you'll get all that sob back and it will actually work. So that's what I do. I kind of use my pets as a fairy to ferry the sob that I gain during talent rush over to gain it during sob rush instead. So besides using pets, there's another way that you can kind of save up Sov for later. And by that, I mean spending your, your talent on your advisors that are currently low star and low level. 
Like, for example, any talent that I'm spending at Tomo right now isn't giving its full value. I can unlock that full value when I star her up and raise her to 400 later. So that's another way that you can spend some talent now and then unlock the value in Sov Rush later is by spending it on lower star, lower level advisors. I think that's enough of talking about my plans. Now I'm going to give you guys some tips. That's what these videos are supposed to be all about after all. One of the tips that I can offer you is make sure you're disciplined about what you spend your diamonds on. But one really good use for diamonds is not the item store. That's a terrible use for diamonds. But these packs here, the ones that cost 288, these are usually a good value because they give some mini game steam and they usually offer a little bit of talent as well. So those are usually a pretty good deal. Um, during Feast Rush, opening seats is a fantastic deal because Feast Points allow you to buy good stuff in here. Um, another thing that I want to tell you is some stuff about Canopoly since it's running right now. So in Canopoly, Canopoly, however you pronounce it, the really important thing to understand is that upgrading your cities is a great way to get these three buffs here active. Um, this one makes you get more gift notes from landing on areas, this one increases your attack against bandits, and then this one increases the amount of experience you get when you pass these barracks that have your advisors assigned them. So it's really important to max out these buffs as quickly as you can because they kind of make the energy that you use when they're maxed more efficient. Um, but after these are maxed, I don't think it's worth using diamonds on the cities anymore. I would just say use all of your diamonds up front to get these maxed, and then don't use diamonds on your cities after that. That's my personal opinion. Obviously, if you've got all the diamonds in the world and your horde wants to rank higher, then upgrade your cities into infinity. But generally speaking, you just want to get these buffs unlocked and then stop spending diamonds on your cities after that. Another thing I'll mention is that I don't actually think any of the items on this secret passage are worth it. I was getting the Marco Polo presents for a while, but then I realized the Queen pouch, on average, it gives you between 1 and 5 shards, so it's going to average 2 or 3 shards. And I think 3 Queen shards is really just better than 1 Marco shard, because it's not like Marco is 3 times as good as a Queen. So I really think the Queen shard pouch is just absolutely the best item. I used to get the Talent Medallion, but after I kind of looked at it a bit, I realized the amount of talent it gives still just isn't quite as good as the average value of the Queen Shards. So I recommend always using your Golden Dice to get the Queen Shards here when you can. Another thing, when people invite you to these secret passages, try to make sure that your character has just crossed the start line here, because you get a lot of points for crossing that start line. And you'll get like a lot of free movement if you accept the invite when you're back there. It pulls you here, or even better, pulls you here. You can run past the start line again. If you have a lot of people inviting you here, you can just cross the start line, go back, cross the start line, and go back. It's a great way to farm a ton of points. So yeah, if people are inviting you, make sure you cross the finish line or the start line first, and then accept their invite. Don't accept it when you're like way over here and end up getting pulled back on the course to here, because that's going to just set you back. So yeah, be mindful of when you accept those invites. While we're on the subject of mini games, I should probably mention to you guys that Egypt Expedition is really a better use of your soldiers than clearing the chapters, especially if you can attack each and every castle just a few times, because the first few times you hit it, it only costs a small amount of soldiers and still gives approximately the same rewards. So if you can hit each castle a few times, you'll rack up a ton of rewards without spending that many soldiers. And another thing you need to consider is that this Egypt game only comes every other soldier rush, and eventually you're going to clear all of the chapters on the map. So you should just make use of the, this Egypt game when it's here and save the chapters, because your chapters are going to run out eventually, so you should try to make them last as long as they can. Um, I guess I'll go over what I buy in each store since it's kind of outdated. There's outdated information in my past videos, starting with the Horde store. Oh, by the way, while we're on the subject of the Horde store, make sure you don't use your biggest advisors in the big raids. If you're not, if you're, if you send those too early, not all of your Horde mates can get in. And if you're at a one billion plus, you're probably getting pretty big, and you should try to use your smaller advisors. Just a courtesy thing. Um, so here I buy the talent. Just because there isn't anything else here that's good to buy, well, the pet skill certificates are okay, but you only need a few of them just to keep your pets leveling up. You don't need a lot. And the hunting items are okay, but they're overpriced. These are generally, if you have, don't have your first advisor to 400 yet, these are good. But once you get one or two advisors to 400, these rapidly become pretty junky. 
So anyway, you just want to buy the talent. And then in this store, I usually run out of points here before I finish buying all the challenge letters because I buy challenge letters every single day and I usually end up running out of points before my points refresh. But if I had all the points in the world, I would then move on to either buying the talent or the wolf medallions. Wolf medallions used to be not super great, but now that the wolves are getting a consort, I think the wolf medallions are back to being a great value again. Um, moving on to the next store, feast store. So you want to buy in here anything that helps you advance your rushes or your milestones. Uh, the equipment actually doesn't help that much in solve rush. It just doesn't give very much compared to talent. So you can usually ignore equipment. The only reason why I'm getting these armor scrolls is they do help your top advisor earn more meat, which will help you with meat rush. So if they're heavily discounted, you can look at maybe getting the equipment scrolls. But mostly you want the talent and you want the items that help in rushes or with milestones. I do get the hay just because it does help in those rushes. Um, if you're running low on points, though, hay is one thing you could skip buying because the hay is kind of expensive. Um, next store, the hunting store. Hunting store, once you get up to like one or two billion, you can pretty much buy most of the items in the hunting store. But the important ones to get are the summon seal, the stamina pills, and then I think the equipment, scro equipment scrolls are actually better than the promo items once you get like past one, 1 billion. But early on, these are pretty good. I get, once you get into the late game, though, you don't really need it upgrade advisors nearly as much, so it's good to just hoard the equipment, I think. Um, and then there's another store, yeah, the friendship store. So I used to be getting the queen shards here, but after doing a bit of math, I realized the talent pendants are actually a better value. So now I'm buying the ten talent pendants here, and I just that's all I buy is just the talent pendants. I ignore the other stuff. Proving ground. For a while, I thought I was just going to build Kuba, and that's it, so I stopped getting these. But now that I realize that the wolves are going to get a consort, I'm going to build sub too, so I'm back to getting these. They're a great value. Um, scrolls and flags are okay, but the wolf shards are definitely better. And that's all I have to say in terms of what to buy from shops. One of the things I haven't covered yet is more tips for mini games that are great for earning Sov. One of them is the Eagle Hunt. Few things. Make sure you always grab the turkeys in Eagle Hunt. They give more points than the other animals do. Always grab the talent and the summon seals when you can. They're better than earning points. They're just really good items to have. In the store, make sure you get the feast gifts. Feast gifts are always great in any mini game store because feast points are just always great to have. Make sure you save your whistles and your hoard help when you go through the special hunting area where all the animals are lined up in three rows. It's best to use your whistles and your horde help when you're in that area. Um, you can clear the entire special hunting area with either one whistle or two horde helps. Um, the best mini game overall is Sweet Celebration. I think the trick for earning the most points in that is to make pairs of three and have your numbers that are close in value group near each other. And make sure you remove the low level pieces that are clogging up your board with a sweet spoon. If you focus on doing it that way, you can get a lot of free combines, which generates more loot. No need to focus on moving up to the higher levels, just you should get as many combines as possible to get as much loot as you can for each bit of stamina that you use. That's it for this video. The next video will be coming out in May when I win that Sov Rush. Until then, if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to post them and I'll answer when I get a chance. Thanks for watching and have a good night.